Gary Chillingworth here for Airgun World Magazine, Shooting Country TV, welcome to Life at a Range. We're back in the conservatory, which means only one thing. No, not another strip down video. It means the wife's not here, and we all know the reason why. If you don't know the reason why, check the opening credits where you see a part of an HW98 go flying into the conservatory window. So what are we doing today? Well, we are going to do a trigger job on a CD trigger, most commonly found in air arms rifles. We're gonna strip it, we're gonna clean it, we're gonna tune it, and then we're gonna set it all up so we can give you a rough idea of, of how to set the trigger to give you a nice light break um, so that hopefully your shooting will improve. And having a good trigger is incredibly important. I mean, I've shot some guns where I've not known when the trigger's gonna go off, and that is just a big no-no. You need to have a trigger where you can hold it on the brake, go into your final fraction of a second of you know taking a breath, and then you're gonna know that with that slightest of pressure, the pellet's gonna leave the barrel. If you're there going, you're never ever gonna, you know, you, your scores won't improve. So, what do we need to do our trigger job on our TX? Well, first of all, we're gonna need to take it apart, so we're gonna need some Allen keys. Uh, you've seen me take a, a, a action out of a stock before on a TX. Um, it's only you know, two stock bolts at the front. You take the trigger guard off and it comes out. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a spanner or uh, a, 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 um, a pair of parrot clamps. It's been a long night. I, I went out for a curry last night and the brain's not really working. In fact, if any of you live in Palmer's Green, go to the Taste of Raj in Palmer's Green best curry house in the whole of London. Absolutely amazing. Right, sorry, more than that. And actually, before we go on, um, thank you for all your kind words about our wonderful sponsor, the, the Surplus Store in Crawley. Um, lots of our viewers and readers are getting back to us and they've had some great service there. So please go show them some love. And they've actually picked us up. <laughs> they've watched what we've done for the last three months ago. We want to extend to the end of the year. The fools. But that's all thanks to you guys going down there and saying hello. And it really is appreciated. So thank you. And thanks to the surplus store in Crawley. Amazing bunch of blokes. We are going to go down there. We're going to take the camera and we're going to go down there and we're going to do a visit. And we're going to hopefully set that up very, very soon. Right. So enough waffle. Um, trigger job. Right. Set of spanners or spanner set. You're going to need a small hammer. You're going to need a pots to put your bits in. You're going to need some three in one oil. A set of punches don't need that a set of parrots you said or a spanner uh, a vernier don't actually know why I've got that but I picked it up so I'm sure we'll find some oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna measure the grub screws on the trigger so we can give you a rough idea of what the setup is now you don't have to have a Dremel but when you're polishing you've got a couple of choices you can either sit there for an hour with a bit of water salt Actually, I'll tell you a funny story about that in a minute. Um, a bit of altar sole and a cloth, and you can sit there and you can rub and rub. Or for a few seconds, you can turn a buffing wheel on, and you can you can turn a buffing wheel on. Hopefully, it won't come flying off the adapter. Uh, look, we've only been going a couple of minutes, and we've already had an accident in the in the conservatory. I can feel the wife sitting up somewhere. Right. With that, it's. A couple of seconds and you've got a mirror polish so I think I paid 15 quid for this at a little or eBay or somewhere like that they, they, they cost peanuts um, you can get these sort of kits we've got loads of buffing wheels and grinding wheels and things like that so before we go any further if you've got a grinding wheel take it off your Dremel before you go to in it I will show you the parts that we need to polish Never ever take a Dremel to your trigger sears. If you do, you'll go through the case hardening, you'll have to throw the sears away. There's nothing you can do. We're not looking at changing the profile of the sears, we're just polishing. We will discuss that if your sears are badly damaged, what you can do, or if they're, they're a bit rough, but this is not something that you will use uh, to ever do anything like that. But we'll come back to that. And of course, cup of Yorkshire tea as we're in the conservatory and that is the law. Um, 
One other thing, I hope you're going to enjoy this video because we are using our new setup. We've got a new camera where we're recording in high def. Now, I was going to record in 4K, but this is a picture of me in 4K. Yeah. Right, extra points if you can tell me who that is, and extra points if you can tell me who was in charge of the spheroids. Um, I will tell you the answers in a minute, and I will tell you a story about the uh, the person who was in charge of the spheroids. Um, yeah, okay, uh, before we get on, little story. Guy once contacted me, he said, Gary, can you help me? Um, I need to polish my trigger steers. What do you use as a polishing compound? So, and if this was a call, you know, a phone call, I said, yeah, use Autosol. A week later, he said, it's, that stuff's rubbish. I said, I, I can't get it to, to polish. And he said, it's no good. And I said, well, you know, that's what everybody uses. I said, can you send me a picture? And he sent me a picture of a tube of Anusol. Yes. So, Autosol, you do not buy this from the chemist. And do not put this up your bottle. Right, okay, so let's get on with it. And uh, let's see if we can get through this trigger job without destroying something in the conservatory. Welcome to Life at a Range. So let's use the proper tool, use a spanner. Um, you can use an adjustable spanner, but use a spanner. Okay, so push down. Well, as we all know, just rotate. If you have a TX and you're worried you know, and you want to know about stripping things down, um, I've made a video uh, on how to do a full strip on a TX200. So if you just either look through the Life at the Range videos or you just go put my name in or put in TX200 strip and you will see my video and see my ugly mug sitting in the conservatory stripping down a video. In your pot so the gremlins don't come and steal it. And then just take your trigger block out and then throw that out of the way. No, don't throw it out of the way. Whoops. And here we have our trigger block. And what we want to do is take this section, the actual trigger mechanism, out of the trigger block. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the camera in a little bit closer. And I've just remembered one thing that we actually need, which we didn't discuss, which I'm going to go and get now. And I will be back in a minute. Okay, the thing that I forgot is a block of wood with some holes drilled in it. Now, what this is, is so that when we place our trigger block on top of here and we're hammering down with our punches, it's pushing the punches into the hole and it just makes life a lot easier. Now, one thing I will say is everything I've learned to do here, I essentially stole from a YouTube channel called Shooting at Dawn. So I just want to have to say a big thank you to the uh, to the guy who made that video. Um, I learned how to do this by watching your video. So thank you so much. Uh, it is much appreciated. Um, right, so let's get on with this and uh, we will, uh, let's get this trigger apart. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to remove these two pins here. So put our punch in, I think this is a two millimeter punch. And we'll put our second one in. So there's our punch. Ah, now I remember why we wanted the parrots. So we can just grip that. And straight into the pot. Nearly knocked my tea over. And then we line up the second one over the hole. There we go, pushed all the way through. And then as you can see, we just pull the trigger out. And be careful because sometimes our trigger, or sorry, our safety catch with our uh, spring, which is on the inside, Luckily that won't come out. That goes flying across the room. But that looks pretty good. So we'll put that to one side so that we make sure we don't lose it. Now, okay. So what we're gonna try and do 
is we're going to try and keep everything in the same rotation whenever we're working on the trig unit and that's essentially with the barrel this way and the butt this way now the pins we're going to need to take out are going to be these two roll pins and then we've got these pins here which need to come out and then we've got these two pins which are this is a trigger pin and this is just a structural pin at the front but uh, as you can see this <laughs> This uh, this one just wants to come out. It doesn't want to sit in there. So we'll take that out now, and we'll go off to uh, to our left. So that was the other trigger one. So we'll take our larger punch. Now you want the punches. See, that's just just pushing out. We'll get rid of that. And now you can see we've got our two roll pins have now been removed. We now need to remove these pins. So again, line it up, take our smaller punch, just push it through. Okay, so as we were as we were putting this punch in, I noticed it was just fractionally too big. This is a new set of punches, mainly because I loaned my set of punches out and uh, and I haven't got them back. So I'm going to get a smaller punch because the last thing we want to do is use a punch that's too big because that will then make the hole larger and then your pins will just fall out. So that's that one out. Just got a last one here. Just put it over the top, get it started, push it through. See, they're just small little pins. That one's out. We want to take the trigger out as well. Last one. Okay, they're all the same length. Put that in the pot. And there's our trigger blade. And you can see here we have our two uh, grub screws um, that you adjust from these two here. But we'll come back to that in a minute. For the time being, that will go in our pot. And now we're just going to slide. Now, that was slightly annoying. Oh, okay, that's fine. Right. So we're now going to take our sears out. There's one. There we go. See what I'd done is I'd cocked it and I was taking it apart with the trigger cocked. And because of that, it won't come out. And there we go. There is our two trigger sears, sorry, there and there. And now we'll talk about the bits that you need to polish and then we'll show you how to put it around. Okay, so we're just using isopropyl alcohol. That's what I like to use because it evaporates, but you can use brake cleaner basically anything that doesn't leave a residue and all we want to do is just go over all the surfaces and take all the dirt off even if it's on the areas that you're not polishing you just want to make sure that everything is clean and degreased okay so while we're degreasing this I'll tell you a little story so it can get just a little bit boring just watching me go like this. Um, right, the the character you saw of me in 4K was Zelda. And it was from a TV program called Terror Hawks years ago. Um, basically, it was a kid's cartoon program. Um, uh, it was a kid's cartoon program, but, but a really enjoyable one. I used to like it. A bit like Thunderbirds, that kind of sort of thing. 
Now, the leader of the spheroids, which was like essentially there, now look at the dirt coming out from the inside of that. The leader of the spheroids was an actor. I think it was called Zero, if I remember rightly. But the actor was a guy called Windsor Davis. Now, if you're a similar age to me, you're all going to know who Windsor Davis is. He was a sergeant major from, look at the dirt, um, from It Ain't Half Hot Mum. Now, my story about Windsor Davis, and I apologise if you've heard this before, because if you know me, I've probably told this story loads of times. I don't know if any of you know, but I'm a train driver by profession. I have mentioned it once or twice. Um, and I was at Cambridge uh, Station. And I hear someone walking up behind me while I'm waiting to get on my train. And I hear this big, booming Welsh voice standing behind me. So, excuse me. And I sort of knew it was him before I'd even turned around. And I turned around and there I was. I was standing face to face with the Sergeant Major. I couldn't help it. Huge, great big smile on my face. He obviously recognised that I recognised him. This was, you know, quite a few years ago now, because unfortunately he's now passed away. May he rest in peace. And uh, he looked me direct in the eye and he asked me, he says, uh, can you tell me where the next train to King's Lynn is? And I looked at him and I said, yes, Mr. Davis, it will be departing from platform number six, or wherever it's departing from. And he looked me right in the eyes and he said, thank you, lovely boy. And for a fraction of a second, I wasn't talking to Windsor Davis, I was talking to the Sergeant Major. And I looked at him and I went, thank you, Sergeant Major. And he did a perfect 180, a little stamp, and strode off down the platform. And it's genuinely, I grew up loving that show and he absolutely made my day. So, um, yeah, lovely bloke. Well, let's say lovely bloke. Uh, you know, I, I met him for all of 20 seconds, you know, a few years ago. But, you know, wherever you are, sir, thank you very much. You made this uh, this chap a very happy man for those few seconds that we had with each other. Right, so we're cleaning. And as you can see, you know, we're getting a lot of crud off the inside of this trigger. And if you get that sort of crud onto the trigger sears, it is, you know, you're not going to get a nice crisp break of a trigger. So that's going to do for now, because otherwise we don't want to watch me for 40 minutes uh, cleaning a trigger. And we're now going to talk about where you need to polish. So I'll bring the camera back in and we're going to talk about where you need to polish on these trigger sears. Okay, so you only need to really clean or polish three spaces. That is this part here on this trigger sear. And over here on this one here, you've got this blade here. And also you need to polish this piece on the end. And as I said, you do not want to be grinding. The only time you'll take any kind of like thousand grit emery cloth to it is if there were ridges and digs in, because this is all case hardened. And the last thing you want to do is go beyond that because then it will just become soft. So polish here, polish here, and polish here. And once you've done that, I mean, you could maybe polish there. And once that is done, you are done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the Dremel and we're gonna to get to polishing. Okay, so here we have our little buffing pad. On our, well, it's not really a Dremel, it's a Dremel clone. I can't afford a real Dremel, I'm poor. Um, so we put a tiny bit of our buffing compound, auto sole, not the other one, on the buffing wheel. I put it on its slowest setting. Now, I'm an idiot. Wear eye protection. I wear glasses because bits are going to fly off. So wear eye protection when doing this always.
okay so we've dremeled all the sears um we've given them all the clean up we've put some pictures up we've got a nice uh mirror finish we did actually talk about this but for some reason the camera just stopped recording don't know why gremlins dremel only using the buffing wheel never use any of the grinding wheels or anything like that and then what i do is once i've got that nice mirrored polish i then just take the dremel and just go over the rest of the you know pretty much in there because but basically these are pretty good at cleaning and i've got a cleaning one and i've, I've got a buffing one and, and and all that so so that's all well and good okay so we've taken our trigger apart we've given it a good polish so how much lubrication do you put it do you whack a load of grease in there do you leave it completely dry no tiny tiny amount of three-in-one oil but essentially it's a rust protection we just take our trigger out of the way take our sears and what i like to do is i just like to put a bit of oil literally a quarter the size of a pea although peas are evil and just essentially do that give each surface including the areas that you've polished just a little wipe with your oily fingers and that is it you tiny only tiny amount of three-in-one oil and that is all you need less is certainly more um, you don't want it too lubricated okay so let's put our trigger back together now the first thing we need to do is remember we spoke a little while ago about this grub screw let's just take that out we'll put it over to the left and this is the way you're going to want to set it up or we're going to want to replace it so you've got a hole lining up there holding up there now the thing we've got to think about is you see in here you see this post we've got to feed it in so that the spring and that sear is on the trigger side of the post and this is on the base side of the post so once that's in and jiggled round it's then a case of lining it up now these are really good these are dental picks i uh, picked them up for a few quid on ebay and they are really really handy is that the hole no it's not the hole and so it's just a case of jiggling this around and trying to find the hole try not to scratch it there you go and once you've found the hole get your pin and stick it in so there we go there's our first pin now the next one here is a roll pin but always make sure that this hook is on the outside because otherwise it will get hooked up on there and then you'll have to take it all apart again so make sure it's on the outside line it up then push your roll pin in and that's good to go your next one is this sear here now as you say remember I was talking about this grub screw with the spring in it that needs to line up with that indentation there because this spring sits in that little fat fingers that sits within that indent and then this grub screw sits on top of that and pushes it down to put pressure on this sear so you want to get that lined up so it goes in this way you need to push it past i always like to push it past there we go i think we got it lined up and again take our dental pick line that up get our pin and drop it in god look at that that pivots that pivots my wife was sitting in the other room i'm sure she'd be going pivot 
Pivot! Because she's a bit of a fan of Friends. But then again, so was I back in the day. Right, so that is in, that is in. So now we want to put our spring in, to put our tension in. So drop that in on top. And then just grab yourself a Allen key that's roughly about the same diameter as the spring. And just give it a little push in. Like that. Then take your grub screw. Put it in. And then tighten it up and what I like to do is I like to have it flush with the casing and that works for me next thing we need to do is put our trigger in now if you notice on this trigger so obviously that is your trigger blade so you'd be pulling it like that so if you've ever got yourself into a position where you've adjusted it and everything has gone wrong so the one closest to the bottom is 6.7 and this is 4.6 if you set it to that you're never going to be that far away so we're going to drop this in preferably the right way around let's line it up get our final pin this is usually a point when you look in your pot and your final pin is missing. So we'll drop that in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to push this down. And there, we need a slightly bigger roll pin. And now, there we go. So we've got a really nice crisp trigger. There's going to be more power that I mean once we've actually attached it into the gun it's not going to be as light as that but that is good enough to start with so our trigger is now back together and hopefully once we put it back in the gun everything will be good okay so now we're going to put our trigger back together so we want our trigger block. First thing we want to do is we're going to want to cock the trigger. Put our roll pin in, which is going to try and fall out again in a minute. And then we need our safety catch. So put that in, make sure that the spring is inside. You can see, I don't know if you can see the spring just there. Push that in through the spring And before we put it in, we're going to want to make sure that that is pushed down so that the trigger block can go in. Cock trigger, roll pins falling out again. Have to get a new roll pin. And we're going to slot this in with the hook pointing towards you furthest away from the trigger. Try and get that roll pin to line up. And there we go see the two holes all lined up now something we didn't talk about earlier is we've got these two pins here and as you can see this is you this is the pin she told you not to worry about now quite simply when you look here you can see that the front one is considerably wider than the back one so this one slots in here Give it a little tap. And the next one goes in. Now, as you can see here, see these lovely scratches? That's because I wasn't thinking once and went whack. Hit it with a hammer. So it's very easy if you're not thinking straight, just to go in too far. And damage your uh, your lovely trigger block especially if you're an idiot like me 
don't know why they put a curved radius on these roll pins. It'd be much easier if they were flat. Right, so we're just trying to get that lined up. There we go. And now hopefully that should all be lined up all well and good trigger works so now we're going to put it back in the gun and we're going to see whether or not the thing actually works so jobs are good okay so we've got the trigger done um, we've just given the spring uh, a little clean up and don't worry the spring didn't go flying out on this occasion I'm not bad with the TX it's the HWs I'm rubbish at so put our trigger block back in we're going to want our our screw <laughs> trigger block flying out oy, 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 oy. right so there we go we're just gonna push that down so it lines up there we go and we'll just take our spanner there's not a lot of preload on this one And there we go, it's back together. Okay, so here we have the trigger and it's time to set it up on your first stage, your second stage and your trigger weight. Now, your first stage of the trigger is when you're pulling it back for the first time and you can pull it back and you can feel that break. And as you can see here, use this stock screw we've got around about half an inch of travel now if you wanted that to be more you would adjust this one at the front you wind it in to make it less you wind it out to make it more your next one is how much you want it to break so basically you get your first stage and then your second stage is how much you want to put the pressure on to actually make the gun fire. Mine is set up with a tiny amount of, of movement and then bang. So it will only move an eighth of an inch and the gun will go off. If you make it even less than that, if you hit the gun, there's a chance it could go off. So around about an eighth of an inch is perfect. And you fine tune that by adjusting these two screws. So an eighth of a turn at a time, you just put your Thing in like that and you give it a little turn and then you try the gun now you can have a trigger that's incredibly light you know a pound a pound and a half and that's adjusted by this one here this is your trigger weight screw and what that will do is it puts more or less pressure on that sear the one with the spring that we showed you and by winding it in it makes the trigger heavier by winding it out it makes the trigger lighter but you need to be aware that by adjusting this, you will affect this because it's all touching on the same sear. So every time you increase the weight or decrease the weight, you need to adjust this as well. Um, as I say, I run mine roughly flat and then I've got a bit of creep and then the gun goes. So that is how you uh, essentially adjust the trigger, but it is a, definitely a personal preference. But what I would do is, before you take or so you start messing with the trigger we quickly whip the trigger blade out measure the stock screw measure the grub screws like we did before 6.7 and 4.3 i think it was so that you can always return it back to baseline now the final thing we need to do is put this gun in a stock and then we need to test it because it's amazing sometimes the guns can be absolutely perfect and you put them in a stock and something happens but that's the final thing we need to do and then the gun is back together Okay, so we've put the gun back together, or to be more precise, we put the gun back together yesterday, but we lost the light. So now it's time to, uh, to test the rifle for the first time. Now, we've been mucking around with the trigger 
and we've been mucking around with sears and what that can do is it can make the gun very sensitive and it's not uncommon that when you've been adjusting triggers the first time you take the safety catch off the gun may fire so always point in a safe direction for the first few times there you go we're good now what we want to do we just want to see if we can find that first stage yeah we've got the first stage just roughly where it should be and that's exactly how I like it so let's try it another couple of times again point in a safe direction safety's off now let's give the rifle a little tap to make sure it doesn't go off first stage yeah there's the first stage oh actually that might be a little bit light because I didn't expect that to go off then we'll try that once more yeah so I'm going to need to increase the trigger weight on that by screwing in the uh, the grub screw at the back and we'll push the spring in a bit more which will make the trigger a bit heavier one final thing we're going to try is we're going to try it in the standing position now when you're prone it's relatively easy to control the trigger the gun is rested all you've got to think about is your finger whereas now that is pretty much the last thing I'm thinking about because I'm wobbling about and all of that I uh, can hold that on there fairly good well if I take the safety catch off actually that's not too bad at all so maybe from the prone position it will be fine so I think what I'm going to do Oh, I'm not going to take you with me, but I'm going to take it on the range and I think I'm going to leave it as it is. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's exactly what we want. Well, we've had the gun apart. We've stripped, we've cleaned, we've polished, we've lubricated the trigger and it's all back together and we haven't broken anything in the conservatory, which is always a bonus. All I do now is hope that my wife doesn't find out what I've been doing. If so, it's been nice knowing you. And finally, I just want to wish you all the very best and thank you for joining us on the range. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. If there's anything I can help you with, please let me know. Please don't ask me to do your triggers. That's what the videos are for. And I don't mind mucking up my own guns, but I don't work on other people's. Um, there are some brilliant gunsmiths out there. As ever, if you're not 100% sure that this is right for you, take your gun to a gunsmith and get them to sort it for you. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Ta-da!